you're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and I am looking forward to our next guest. He spent 20 years of service to the U.S. government at the Department of Defense, De Department of State, White House National Security Council, Central Intelligence Agency, and the U.S. Senate staff member. And now he is the CEO of Momentus Inc. And their goal is to help customers optimize the destination of space, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking space. They talk about being the Uber or the UPS of space, and I am fascinated by this, and I am excited to meet you, John Rood. Welcome to America Trends. Oh, thank you for having me on, Mary. It's just great to be with you. Wow, I was reading all about what you do, and I'm just fascinated by this. You know, we talk on this show a lot about how the technology is just changing every minute, and we talk a lot about how space travel is a potential thing, and even vacations in space might be something that maybe my kids are gonna see. So, but I really think, is that possible, really, what's going on? And then I learn about companies like yours, and I think, uh, yes, it is, like, apparently it is kind of possible. So talk to me first about, you have quite a history of your work experience, and then what led you to start Momentus? Well, I started my career, as you mentioned, at, at CIA as an analyst, and I followed missile and space programs overseas. And I had been interested in space, of course, as a, as a child, but that was my first professional exposure and watching the development elsewhere outside the United States and the, and the growth of those space programs. And I remember visiting an Air Force base in Colorado, and they talked about this new thing that was going to be coming called GPS and how this would change our lives. And I have to admit, at the time, I didn't fully appreciate the significance of that because I thought, well, that's good. You can have your position. I had navigated as a Boy Scout and things like that using Compass, but um, I didn't fully appreciate that that's how we would do banking. That's how we would transmit our emails. That's how we would navigate with Waze and these other amazing uh, systems. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't fully get that. But then later in life- What year was that about? To, Sorry to interrupt you, but what year was that approximately? Well, that was in the late 1980s and around 1990 uh, that I was doing that work. Yeah. And so um, then, you know, later in my career, I was responsible for space policy at the Defense Department or was engaged in other activities. But, you know, in those early years of my career, it, it really dawned on me what, uh, you know, Steve Jobs or Henry Ford would say about technology, that customers aren't always aware of what this can do for their lives. You know, the famous Henry Ford quote that, if I would have asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. But uh, the same thing is happening now in space. And I, I got excited about, after my government service, the opportunity to join Momentus, which had uh, been around for a couple of years. But I was helping a company uh, as a consultant and helping them find a new CEO. And then when I saw the opportunity and, and what it could do to change the way we operate in space, I got excited by that. And at some point in the search process, when I was helping the uh, company find a new CEO, they said, well, you know, what's the matter with you? Why wouldn't you want the job? <laughs> what's the matter with you? Well, I, I love that. And, you know, so I'm just reading this stat that the global space market grew by 8% last year and is expected to reach over $737 billion in a decade. And... Uh, so you are in the right place, and you are the future of where we're going. And you brought up C GPS, and I was just thinking the other day, you know, where I was at a stoplight, or I was driving, and then the GPS told me, after this stoplight that's in 30 feet, you're going to turn right. I mean, and the precision with which it told me. And so, you know, they were talking about that in the 80s. So now it's here, and now what you're doing could potentially be how, how far down the line or, you know... Um, where are you thinking in terms of like what you're working on? When will it be actualized? Well, we're starting to see the, the leading edge of it now, and it will emerge in the coming years because there's, there's two mega trends that are creating a demand for the kind of in-space transportation and infrastructure services that Momentus provides. The first is that the cost to send something to orbit, to put it into space, has come down dramatically, you know, according to McKinsey, by 95% over the last two decades. Wow. And last year, there was a growth just from 2021 to 2022. The number of launches worldwide grew by 33% to a record high. And you're seeing a growth of the number of satellites that at the same time, it's much less expensive to put something in space, which was the big barrier to entry before. You didn't have the ability, availability, and the cost was out of reach. But at the same time, what you can do with very small satellites, the other companion technologies, 
have surged. And so you're seeing dramatically smaller packages, smaller satellites go to space that are as capable as very large ones used to be. So those two trends are, are leading to this big growth in the number of satellites in space. Um, Right now there's about 5,500 satellites in space, about half of which were put in space just last year to wow. show you the growth. Um, you know, from the time Sputnik was launched in the 50s, the, the world's first satellite, it took about 50 years to have a thousand. So this rate of growth is going up and according to the wow. GAO or Government Accountability Office, by the end of this decade, just seven years away in 2030, you're going to have 55,000 satellites in space. Wow. And the reason is it costs a lot less to put them in space and you can do a lot more with them. So where do we come in? Well, if you have a rocket that is taking a, a large number of small satellites to space, it's very similar to a container ship coming to the port of Los Angeles or another large city. All that cargo needs to be just further distributed because okay. if you just have a cloud of satellites in one spot in space, they can't serve the purpose of being distributed like a constellation for earth sensing or to uh, send communications around the world. And that's where uh, being the UPS of space, if you will, to redistribute that cargo. And the video that you're showing here shows that we're using water as a propellant. And essentially our uh, delivery vehicle is going to deliver smaller satellites to space, or we can stay attached if they just wanna have a hosted payload that the, the company is working just on its instruments. And we can provide the host for power, communications, movement around space. And then we're working on the ability to reposition satellites in space and repair them and refuel them. And so what's being shown here in the video is, is a Vigoride vehicle, which is our first orbital service vehicle on a rocket. And this, this is a, a animation of a launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Which, was that by the way, we just uh, finished integrating our, our latest vehicle onto a, just such a rocket at Vandenberg over the weekend. Oh, wow. So this Vigoride went up uh, May 25th of 2022. Is that correct? Yes. Our first spacecraft went up uh, in May of 2022. We sent our second one up in January of 2023. And, and Vigoride 5 is the name of that one. Okay. Uh, they're both still in space. Vigoride 5 is still operational and we're commanding it and going through its, its uh, commissioning process right now. And then the next one, <clears throat> Vigoride 6, has already been uh, sent to uh, Vandiver and is integrated on a rocket. What was just shown there was the separation of one of our uh, vehicles going into space from the uh, SpaceX launcher. And so we've got two in space now, a third one will soon be there. It's targeted for launch in April. And then we have a fourth one under construction in our clean room uh, at our facility in San Jose, California. So we're hitting a nice uh, pace to produce these spacecraft and we're flying interesting customers. You know, for instance, the, um, this is one of the things that attracted me to Momentus is a chance to support this way of doing different things in space and change the world. So uh, one of our customers that we're hosting right now on uh, Vigoride 5 in space is Caltech. And they want to show the ability with this large solar array to collect solar energy in space and transmit the electricity wirelessly first in space and then to Earth. Whoa. And the concept being that they can provide uh, solar energy. And so you're showing some video of our spacecraft solar panels here unfurling. We do this test in um, uh, our headquarters here in San Jose, California. And it's, it's meant to simulate zero gravity. So you have to do some very special things to uh, support those solar arrays so that uh, gravity doesn't bend them or warp them because they're really meant to operate in space. Wow. Um, but the ones you just saw there, that was our latest test, but we, we did that on our current vehicle. And those solar arrays are like in the animation behind me. They're, they're deployed, they're generating power normally and uh, charging and discharging, and it, it's, a, it's an interesting time. Is that gonna make my SDG and E bill go down anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> we need help I, with our, our uh, um, electricity rates here. Now, I wanna talk really quickly before I have to let you go is um, about, you mentioned the water propulsion. Uh, is that the MET, or is that something different? That's MET, right? That, that is the MET. Microwave electrothermal are... thruster. That's right. We're, we're pioneers in commercializing this technology. It was invented in universities, but we're taking water, ordinary water, and it's not under pressure. That's our propellant. 
And what we do with it is, uh, first we have reaction control thrusters that put out little puffs that can control the orientation of the spacecraft. But then our main thruster, which you mentioned, the MET, or microwave electrothermal thruster, uses a microwave very similar to your, your home microwave, but it heats the water in a vapor. We vaporize the water and then it heats it to roughly half the temperature of the surface of the sun to create a plasma that we then control to provide thrust. And so we're, we're going to demonstrate that. That's our plan here uh, in the coming weeks on wow. our current mission. And the reason we chose water is it, it can be more efficient than chemical propellants, which are very hazardous and hard to handle, but it's also found on the moon and the solar system. So when you and your kids talk about, hey, I wanna to go to the moon or I wanna go beyond the moon. You can do how it. How are you gonna refuel yourself? What? Well, one of the ways you can do that is find water there. I got to wrap you up, John. Journey. Thank you so much for taking time with us. This is incredible. Momentous.space. I am oh, I am in awe of what this what you're doing. Thank you so much, John.